In this tutorial organic chemistry screencast, we're going to consider the regioselectivity of radical bromination in the sense of accessing primary versus secondary alkyl bromides. If we consider the molecule propane and we're treating that with molecular bromine and light, the major product that we would get from this would be 2-bromo propane. This would be classified as a secondary alkyl bromide. The other potential product that could form would be 1-bromo propane. And this would be considered a primary alkyl bromide. We know under these conditions that the secondary alkyl bromide is formed because the mechanism proceeds through a secondary radical which is more stable than a primary radical. So what do we do if we want to generate the primary alkyl bromide? So to do that we're going to look at a separate set of conditions that are different from using molecular bromine and light. So this is going to be a radical bromination in the presence of peroxides. So we're still proceeding through a radical mechanism, but this time the conditions are different in that we're going to use hydrogen bromide and a peroxide initiator. So overall, let's consider the reaction. Instead of starting with propane, as we did above, in this case we're going to start with propene. We're going to use hydrogen bromide as the bromine source in the presence of tert butyl hydroperoxide. So what does that look like? A peroxide bond has an oxygen-oxygen sigma bond, and so we're going to use the tert butyl hydrogen peroxide. And so overall, these conditions, as compared to the above conditions, will give the 1-bromo propane as the major product. So compare that to above where it was the minor product. So what we want to do now is understand how this mechanism works so that we, we can see how accessing a secondary versus a primary bromide actually occurs. So the first thing that happens in a radical reaction is initiation. And so the initiation step in this case is going to be cleavage of the di tert butyl hydrogen peroxide bond. So if we treat that with light, we're going to cleave this bond. So this is a homolytic cleavage we're generating two equivalents of the tert butyl radical this radical is then going to go into a second initiation step where it reacts with hydrogen bromide. So it's going to abstract a proton. So we're showing the fish hook mechanism. In this case, we lose tert butyl alcohol.
and we're generating the bromine radical. So we're accounting for all our electrons. In this case, we now enter the first propagation step. wherein that bromine radical is going to add to the alkene of propene. It's going to add in such a way that we get the most stable radical. So of our two alkene carbons, we're going to label them A and B. So the radical will add. In this case we're going to show path A first. So we're going to form a bond between carbon A and bromine and then the radical will end up on carbon B. So we're adding to A. The radical ends up on B. This is the bond we just formed. Now the radical is ending up on carbon B. And if we classify this, this is a secondary radical. The alternative choice is if we formed a bond from bromine to carbon B and the radical ended up on carbon A. Let's put our labels in. This ends up being a primary radical. So we're able to determine how this bromine radical adds to the alkene based on the formation of the most stable carbon radical. And that's going to be secondary. So again, our trend for radical stability is tertiary is greater than secondary is greater than primary. So now from here, this secondary radical is going to go into the second propagation step. Reacting with HBr. So this is going to be the proton source that generates our propagating radical. So the carbon radical will abstract hydrogen. So we show the fish hooks which indicate the movement of a single electron. We homolytically cleave the HBr bond. That's going to generate our product. Plus bromine radical. And this is the propagating. That funnels back into the first propagation step, adding to propene, thus um, cycling through the free radical chain reaction. So in this mechanism, when we have the presence of a peroxide and hydrogen bromide, we, we end up with the least substituted alkyl bromide. In this specific example with propene, it's one bromopropane. Examples of other radical initiators benzoyl peroxide which has the structure azobiz isobutyronitrile, shortened as AIBN.
or other radical initiators that you can use in this mechanism. So what we want to be clear on is whether you're employing molecular bromine and light, you're going to get the most substituted alkyl bromide as the product. Or if you're using HBr and a peroxide, you're getting the least substituted alkyl bromide as the product. And that is an example of regioselectivity in radical bromination. Cool.